An interesting incident occurred on June 22, 1943. At about 6 o'clock in the morning, a long German came out of his trench, approached the wire fence, and began shouting, Russ, come here! One Soviet soldier climbed out of his trench and walked toward the German. He stopped near the fence and started talking to him. We sat in our trenches and kept them on the scope watching their actions. The German took off his overcoat, threw it on the wire, stretched out his hand to our soldier, and he was on the other side. Then the German took him under his arm and took him to his trenches. After a while songs were heard from there. About an hour later the German and our soldier came out of the trench and headed in our direction. Both were carrying something in their hands. Again with the help of the overcoat and the German, our soldier climbed over the wire fence and swaying heavily came to us. When he came to the trench and jumped into it, we saw in his hands a bottle of schnapps, two packs of galettes and two cans of canned food. He himself was very drunk. And the Germans asked him to bring vodka, lard and rye bread. A few hours later the soldier went to the Germans again, taking with him a flask of vodka, a loaf of bread and a piece of lard. He came back again drunk and again with gifts from the Germans. Two hours after the soldier's return, another Soviet soldier, an Uzbek by nationality, wanted to go to the Germans. The platoon commander allowed it, and after a while the Uzbek was heard singing from the German dugout, and in another half an hour he came out of the trench accompanied by a German who was carrying something in his hands. When our soldier climbed over the wire fence, the German handed him what he was carrying. When he jumped into the trench, we saw blood on both temples. When we looked closely, we saw that the Uzbek was missing both ear flaps. The soldier was drunk and tears were flowing from his eyes. From his story we learned that when he came to the Germans in the dugout, they sat him down, poured half a pot of wine and began to treat him. His greed made him drink all the wine at once. When he became intoxicated, he began to sing his songs. While singing, a German came from behind, pulled his ear and tapped it with something, and then did the same to his other ear. He felt pain, touched one ear and it was gone, only blood, touched the second ear it was also gone, and only blood. At first he didn't understand, but when they gave him a pot, from which he drank wine, he saw his ears floating in vegetable oil. The regimental commander learned about this case. He came to the company, the first soldier praised for bravery, the second soldier was sent to the sanitary unit, and after recovery was put on trial by court-martial. It turns out in the dugout at the Germans, with his singing he praised the German army. Lieutenant platoon commander was demoted to sergeant and banned all communication with German soldiers. Two days later in the morning, as soon as dawn broke, artillery and mortar fire was opened on our defenses, which lasted for about twenty minutes. The rampart of fire was still rampant in our defenses, and behind it ran chains of drunken Germans. The enemy was met with heavy machine gun fire. Grenades and flamethrowers were launched. In some areas the enemy broke into our trenches and hand-to-hand -hand fighting began. In half an hour there was no one left of the advancing troops, and only some of them ran back to their trenches. During the hand-to-hand -hand fighting, both opposing sides were swearing in Russian, and later we learned from captured prisoners that we were opposed by Vlasevites. That is why the Uzbek should not have praised the German army.